looks like we're just about spooling here. There we go. We are live. Hey, this is Paul Palmer. Welcome to Thursday Night Live. I <clears throat> hope some of you guys jump on tonight. If you haven't been with us in the last uh, four weeks, I want to uh, encourage you to go back in the video section of Patriots of Christ and look at <clears throat> the series on the authority of the believer. And the reason I'm saying that, quite frankly, is just I believe we're in a day and a time when the church, more than ever before, needs to understand the authority that they have in Jesus Christ and how all that works, how it comes together. Of course, it's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to happen by you uh, studying. All those studying is going to help because uh, the Bible declares that faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. So you have to be hearing and that's the reason that i'm encouraging you to go back and watch those videos because you hear the word being spoken and as it goes into your spirit uh we are hoping that many of us get a revelation and understanding we get a spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of jesus christ and uh, what all that means regarding the believer's authority. So if you haven't done that, if you have time, they're not that long. The longest one is probably about 25 minutes. But again, hearing, uh, spiritually hearing, is where faith is born. And the day and time that we live in is never before. We need to understand our authority that we have in Jesus Christ. And it is sorely, sorely lacking today. We're seated on a very limited basis. But God instructs us in his word that the authority that we have in Jesus Christ, he wants all the believers to understand what we have. And that's why Paul prayed for the church of Ephesus that their spirits or their understanding or their spirits would be enlightened, that they, their spirits would be open to these truths in Christ and what he did and what that means to them as believers. So <clears throat> I just wanted to get on a little bit early tonight and encourage many of you to go back so that you can hear the Word of God being spoken and you can build your faith and uh, pray these prayers that Paul prayed for you and the lives of all those in your family and that you can be enlightened to these truths and begin to walk in your authority that's in Christ Jesus. But last week, we shared the fact that we were seated with Christ. We had come to that part. And it says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verses 6, he says, And it raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And we also said that authority that uh, Christ has needs to be perpetuated in the earth by the body of Christ. And, and well, talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. But that's the only way that the authority of Christ is going to come into the earth is in and through the body of Christ. And so the Holy Spirit wants us to know that we're seated <clears throat> with Christ at our Father's right hand. And being seated at the right hand, we told you, if you know any history, <clears throat> when you're seated at the right hand of a king, or of the uh, Pope, that is indicative of a position of power and authority. We also said in Ephesians 1.18 uh, through verse 23, we said, this shows us that God demonstrated his mightiest work in the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says the resurrection was according to his mighty power raising Christ far above all principality and power and might and dominion in every name that's named, not only in this world, but in also in that which is to come. So with him, you have also been raised according to that same mighty power that he first placed in Christ. And you can go back in Ephesians chapter 1 and you can read those things. Paul uh, prayed that prayer for the believers at Ephesus that they may uh, understand what that exceeding greatness is of his power 
that works towards him, which he first put in Christ when he raised him, see, from the dead. So like, like as Christ was raised, so were we. Where? How? By the same outworking mighty power of God. So we need to understand that. We also told you in verse 19, it says, And what is the exceeding greatness of his power to us word who believe? He was talking about the same power that he raised Christ and uh, with the works towards us who believe. And so once you believe, this power is active in your life. You may not understand it. You may not have a revelation of it. You may not have any insight into it. But because we don't know something, doesn't make it not available. Doesn't make it not so. Hosea chapter 4 says, My people go into captivity, or my people perish for a lack of knowledge. So just because much of the church has a lack of knowledge regarding the authority that Christ has extended towards them as the head of the church, and he fills all things, doesn't mean that it's not so. So it's just like, uh, you know, if you have a sack of groceries in your house, and I'm just using this for an example, and you say, oh, wow, well, you know, I've got a full sack of groceries. I've got all, I've got meat and cheese and bread and all kinds of good things in there. And, and I, you know, there, boy, I'm so, you know, great that I have those things. It's wonderful. That, but see, if you don't utilize it, if you don't partake of it, it won't do you any good. And so that's the way the authority is. If, if we're not aware of it, if we don't ever come to have faith in the authority that God has given us, it won't do us any good. But that doesn't mean that it's not available just because we don't know. We also said the source of our authority is found in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Our authority is not found in the crucifixion. I'm going to say that again, and I'm going to explain that here in a little bit. Our authority is not found in his death on the cross. That's where we died with Christ. But our authority is found in his resurrection. That like as Christ was resurrected from the dead, so are we. And should we walk in newness of life? We also shared... Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 through 7, and in verse 1, it told us that, And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. So the Holy Spirit is saying, According to the working of God's mighty power, that like he raised up Christ, so did he quicken you when you were dead in your sins. And you died to sins when you died with Christ. That's, that's the power of the crucifixion. You died with Christ. And we said the authority that Father placed on the head of the church, Jesus, he also placed on the body. And the reason we said that is because the head and the body are one. You know, when we look at somebody and we see their head and we see their body, we don't say that they're two separate people. We say that they're one. And that's the way the body of Christ works. He is the head of the church. And we are his body, uh, members in particular, uh, the Bible declares. But we all make up one body. And so that same authority that Christ had has been delegated to us, his body. Okay? And when the church gets a revelation of their authority, uh, we'll rise up and we'll begin to do the works that Jesus did. And like I said, we've been seeing them in our nation on a limited basis. But it's God's best that the church rise up, each member in particular, in the authority to access the grace of God that he has for their lives to move in a way that he wants them to move, yes, supernaturally, doing the works of Christ. So most of the church believes that we were raised together with Christ. Nobody disputes that. But why don't we also believe that we've been uh, seated together with him? 
My point is, if part of that verse is so, then all of the verses so. If we've been raised and resurrected with Christ, then we've also ascended high above all principalities, powers, dominions, and mights that's named in this earth, and we're seated with him uh, at the right hand of God where there's authority and power. And so uh, the whole verse is so, just not the ones that we decide to pick out. So thank God we are the body of Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 6 verses 14 through 15 says this about the body of Christ. It says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? If you look at that, you see there the believer is called righteousness, and the unbeliever is called unrighteousness. The believer is called light, and the unbeliever is called darkness. The believer is called Christ, and the unbeliever is called Belial. Christ stands as a word that means anointing, or the anointed. And that's the power. And so... Uh, we are seated with him. We are the body of Christ perpetuating his kingdom, his authority in the earth. And so we're seated with him. 1 Corinthians 6.17 says, But he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. You see, we're not of a different spirit. I'll read it again. But he that's joined unto the Lord is one spirit. So we're one with Christ. We are Christ, the anointing in the earth, because we're seated at the right hand of the majesty on high. All things, you see, were put under our feet. So not only have we died with Christ at the cross, we've been raised back to life, but we've ascended high above all principalities and powers and dominions and might, and then we've been seated in Christ at the right hand of our Father, where he's placed all things under his feet, which he's the head of the church and we're the body. So all those things are also under our feet because that authority that's on the head is on the body. We need to get a handle on this. You know, our lack of authority problem occurs when we only preach a cross religion. What we need to preach really is a throne religion to believers. By that I mean people have often thought that they're supposed to remain at the cross. Let me say, I'm going to make a big statement. Jesus died on the cross, but he did not stay on the cross. Hello? He was dead and buried in a grave, but he did not stay in the grave. He was resurrected by the mighty power of God, and then he ascended up to heaven, and then he was seated at uh, the Father's right hand. So, uh, we were, and, you know, I even know some people that received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, but they backed up to the cross, and they've stayed there. And it's true now, I'm going to just stay on this for a second, because I know somebody may uh, shoot at me on this, but we come to the cross... For salvation but we don't remain there we need to go on to the ascension and being seated with Christ I had a, uh, a father in the Lord once told me he said Paul everybody needs their own personal uh, throne transcendence he said they need to transcend or ascend see themselves in other words he was trying to say we need to see ourselves seated in Christ and in that authority, and when we uh, rule and reign in this life, we do so from that position. And we'll talk a little bit about that. But we can't be left in death at the cross because we're also raised with Christ and we're seated with him. So positionally, that's where we're at right now as the body of Christ. We are seated with Christ 
in the place of authority in heavenly places. Many Christians still today don't know anything about the authority of the believer. You know, we, we taught on faith before this series because Father said there's a whole generation, Paul, that knows nothing about faith in God. And so we taught about faith, and then a little bit later on he said to me, if they don't know anything about faith, then they most certainly don't know anything about the authority that I've given to them. And so a lot of people are still that uh, way today. Many, many believe we're saved by grace, but they think they have to live a life dominated by the devil, and they're constantly fighting him just barely getting along in life, and many of them seem to magnify the devil more than they do God. You know, oh, I'm going through this attack and that attack. We need to be delivered from a bondage of death and walk in the newness of life that Christ has given us. Romans 6, 4 says, Therefore we are buried with him by baptism into death. Now that's the death part. That like as Christ was raised from the dead, that like as, see, we're raised too, that like as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so, we also should walk, that's a daily living, walk in the newness of life. That's the authority that's been delegated to the body of Christ. We ought to walk in that newness of of life in Christ. Romans 7, 6 says, But now we are delivered from the law, that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit, and not in the oldness of the letter. You see, all things have become new. We are in Christ, seated with Christ, at the right hand of our Heavenly Father. And so, that authority has been delegated to us. We are not at the cross. We died with Christ, but he raised us up together with him. Praise God. Go on and learn how to take your place of authority. Just go on and do it. Don't make excuses. Don't be lackadaisical. Don't be uh, push it off like, oh, no, that's for some select few, not for me. No, no, no. That's prayer that Paul prayed for all the believers at the church of Ephesus was inspired by the Holy Spirit. And since that prayer was inspired by the Holy Spirit, it's for all believers. You know, one of, one of the problems it seems like we have in the church today is nobody, absolutely nobody, wants to rise up to the level that God has placed us in, in the Lord Jesus Christ. We would just as soon have just a little bit of feeling that makes us feel good and then come back, wash off, and then repeat and do it again. Seem just to bide our time and just turn, just marking time in this earth. But God never intended us just to mark time. He intended us to rise up in the authority and do the works of Christ in the earth so people can see Christ in us, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Listen, the right hand of God is the center of all the power of the universe. And Christ is there, and we are seated with him. And we know that Christ, with his resurrected physical body, is there, and he's in full possession of his rights, and he's waiting the Father's time when all of his enemies... All of his enemies shall become his footstool. Hebrews 1.13 says, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thy enemies thy footstool. You see, the elevation of Christ's people with him into the heavenly clearly points out to the fact we sit with him, sharing not only the throne but also his authority. That authority belongs to us. You know, I keep saying Hosea chapter 4 verse 6 says, you know, my people perish for a lack of knowledge. You know, if we don't get a hold of this and understand what belongs to us, it won't do us any good. I told you that story about that poor man, I believe it was in Chicago back in the early 20s. He rented a little room for, I don't know, $1.50 a week or something like that. 
and he lived out of garbage cans, and he was a well-known figure in Chicago. And then uh, his neighbors got, you know, uh, a little uh, concerned because they hadn't seen him in two or three days. They went to the apartment and found him dead in his apartment, and the autopsy revealed that he died of malnutrition. But when they found a money belt around his waist, they found back then he had t over $23,000 in the money belt. There he could have been eating in the finest restaurants, living in a nice room or in some warm hotel, but no, he died of malnutrition because he did not use what legally belonged to him. And that's some of the position that we see much of the church in today. Here we are. Christ has done it all, died. We died with him. We've been delivered from our sins, but we don't stay at the cross. We've been risen with cross uh, with Christ, excuse me, far above all the principalities and powers and dominions and mights, not only in this world, but that which has come and seated with him in heavenly places. He's the head, we're the body, we're one, and that power and authority has been delegated to the body, and we are to perpetuated in the earth, but we need to rise up to that level of faith and let Christ's uh, authority released in his body by faith and begin to do the works of the Lord Jesus Christ. No wonder Paul said in Romans 5.17, for if by one man's offense, death, that spiritual death, reigned by one, much more they which receive an abundance of grace and of the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. A lot of the translations, and particularly the Amplified Bible, say reign as kings in life. So are we just going to reign uh, when we get to heaven? I just want to say, no, sir. Uh-uh. No, he intends us that we're to reign as kings in life by Jesus Christ right now. And that's what authority is. We take authority that Christ's throne represents to us. And very few in the church have exercised uh, to very much of that authority. Some have exercised more than others, maybe because they just have a more comprehension of their authority in Christ. But that doesn't mean that it's not uh, for all of us. All of us need to comprehend the richness of Christ's grace uh, and the authority that is delegated to us and begin to live and reign in this life. And so we're going to cut it off there tonight. And uh, when we get back uh, Sunday, we want to talk about we must maintain a spiritual balance with this. And uh, because... How many know you can, some people, one of the biggest challenges in the church is sometimes is, is to keep a spiritual balance because because of excesses, people seem to they can get in a ditch on either side, but we need to stay in the middle of the road. And so we need to talk a little bit about that before we, before we get into the next section. And after that, uh, next week we want to talk, I mean Sunday, we want to talk about maintaining a spiritual balance and also breaking the demonic power, or, or breaking the power of the devil, or whatever you want to call it. We want to talk about that Sunday night. Very, very important. But listen, open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 1, and pray that prayer every day. Ask God for a spirit of wisdom and revelation of the knowledge of Him and the knowledge of Christ. Ask Him to enlighten your spirit to that exceeding greatness of his power that works towards you. God is counting on the body of Christ to rise up in this day and walk in the authority that we have in Christ Jesus. Listen, God bless you guys. I'll see you again Sunday night live, 7 o'clock p.m. Have a good evening.